All right, Alexander, let's talk some more about the uh, Senate report on uh, Biden, specifically how it's zeroed in on Hunter Biden and the money he was making as the uh, vice president's son, traveling with the vice president and uh, monetizing the, uh, the fact that he was the vice president's son and monetizing it in a spectacular way. Here is a title from Zero Hedge. It says, Hunter Biden raised counterintelligence and extortion concerns, may have participated in S trafficking, SEX, Senate report. So the explosive part of this is of this report is the amount of money that he was extracting, number one, from all these deals. And number two, the fact that he may have participated in S trafficking. In other words, we have from what I understand, we have the first indications of a money trail where Hunter Biden paid money to um, Ukraine and Russian women in the United States who would then send that money back to Ukraine and Russia. And that money had ties to S trafficking rings and adult entertainment circles. Now, the, uh, the Democrats are obviously denying all of this. And we have an update from Zero Hedge that reports Adam Schiff has responded to the Biden probe, saying that after Trump was impeached for, quote, directing a scheme to extort a foreign partner to announce an investigation into Vice President Joe Biden's son, that Trump's most willing allies in Congress quickly took up the mantle and carried out his demand. Schiff accused the two Senate committee chairs of, quote, promoting the same Russian disinformation, adding, quote, the Kremlin must be very pleased. Now, Alexander, you sent me a message earlier today and you connected some pieces to the person that we cannot name, the, the gossip blower, as we call him, the whistleblower, the gossip blower. And the reason why th that person is so protected is because he's also tied up in what was going on with um, with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. And that may be why Adam Schiff is so sensitive to uh, to this investigation and to this information. A title from Politico reads like this, Alexander. GOP senators anti-Biden report repackages old claims. Ron Johnson and Chuck Grassley in Grassley's interim report largely relies on previously known information. And this is from a tweet from Chuck Ross. And Chuck Ross says, a totally laughable headline from Politico, which was the go-to outlet for Democrats to preempt and undercut and undercut the Biden probe. So Alexander, what do you make of what's going on here of the Democrats' uh, response to this report? The fact that they're saying it's repackaging old claims. And of course, the fact that Adam Schiff appears to be completely freaked out by the information that's coming out and, of course, the explosive part, which is the S-trafficking of Hunter Biden. Right. Let's let's deal with whether or not it is, in fact, repackaging old claims. Now, of course, some of some of the general picture we have known about. I mean, we've known about the fact that obviously Hunter Biden was a director at Burisma Holdings. But the main focus up to now, till very recently, was the fact that, you know, whilst he was director of Burisma Holdings, the Procurator General of Ukraine, Mr. Shokin, was dismissed at the instigation of his father, Joe Biden, who openly bragged about it and said that he was stopping Ukraine receiving money from the IMF until Shokin was sacked. That was the main focus. That was what people were talking about. They were not going into the details of some of the things that were going on. Now, Schiff talks about Russian disinformation. The authors of this report take that allegation head on. Their point throughout is that every allegation they make derives from U.S. government documents. Everything. Everything comes from the U.S., not just the U.S. government, but the Obama administration itself. It is from the Obama administration and its records, which they exercising their oversight uh, uh, um, um, duties as senators have had access to, which have enabled them to put this kind of report together. So this is where we get for the first time information 
which is for me completely new about Hunter Biden, for example, getting three and three and a half million dollars out of nowhere for no apparent reason from the former from the corrupt former wife of the corrupt former mayor of Moscow. That's a completely new thing. I've never heard that one before. That's definitely not a reheated allegation. That's a big, big thing. That's, I mean, three and a half million dollars. To me, that's a lot of money. That certainly repays uh, um, consideration. Also, it's the first time I knew, I've known of the fact, that the, um, uh, that, uh, the Treasury, the U.S. Treasury, had concerns about some of these funds that were finding their way backwards and forwards from Hunter Biden, and um, that um, there was an issue of a possible FBI investigation. This is new. This is completely new. So what the Democrats are doing, in effect, is they're trying to pretend that this is, you know, new stuff, repackaging previous allegations, when it is nothing of the kind. They're trying the old trick of saying it's Russian disinformation, when it is, in fact, US government, Obama administration information. And, of course, the major thing that they're doing is that they're staying completely silent about what I suspect is the biggest thing of all, which is in terms of in terms of money, which is about the allegations uh, uh, connecting Hunter Biden to China, which again, I, I want to stress, these are not just allegations, they are based on US government documents. Now, the other thing is, which you mentioned, the, the, um, the S uh, allegations, which are there in that report, well, I knew nothing about those. I don't think anybody has done. Um, we are supposedly living in the world of, you know, um, people being aware and concerned about these things. We've had Me Too in the United States. We've had the Epstein scandal in the in the United States. I would have thought if people take that sort of thing seriously, I take it extremely seriously, by the way, that this is something that people would be very concerned about and would want to ask questions about and would want to know what the answers to it was. Because when you read words like human trafficking in a report, that should raise very loud, loud alarm bells. And it is completely new. And again, the report says that it is factually confirmed that Hunter Biden transferred money to certain resident um, alien women in the United States from Russia and Ukraine, and that these sums of money, thousands of dollars, that's what the report says, uh, as part of that money was then transferred by those same women to people in Ukraine and Russia, and that, and there's a quote, the, the report actually has, puts this in quotations, so this appears to come from some kind of official report from someone, um, FBI, who knows, that um, the people who were being, you know, being sent all this money, that it gives, it gives all the impression of an East European prostitution or human trafficking ring. Now that is, to my mind, I mean, it's off the scale. I mean, that if that doesn't demand e explanation, what, what does? I mean, that's, I mean, it's bad enough to steal money on this scale, but to be in, engaged in that kind of criminal activity, well, I mean, that that's really shocking. At least it, it is very shocking to me. I think it should be shocking to most people. And at the very least, we need an explanation. Now, it may be, I have to say this, that Hunter Biden didn't understand some of the things that were going on and didn't understand some of the people who were involved. Uh, I'm not accusing him of any crime. I do think he needs to explain and comment about the specific allegation because it seems to me very, very serious indeed. Yeah, I mean... It sounds to me, Alexander, that he was either paying for services 
or doing business with this entity. I mean, I can't, I can't think of any other way because if he was paying for services, then I can understand the transaction to these, to these women who I think we should find out who they are. The Senate should find out. Investigators should find out who they are and absolutely investigate them. Either he was paying for services and then these women sent the money mm. back, to, back to Russia and Ukraine in order to, to provide those services. Or he was wheeling and dealing with this trafficking entity. And thus, the money is being laundered. Well, indeed, to a absolutely. So it's, it's, it's some, it has to do with something, one of the two. Well, well, it is one or the two. And of course, there's another possibility also, which is, is, is that this is some kind of an intelligence operation. Remember what the report says that, you know, this opens up possibilities for extortion and provoke concerns about a counterintelligence counterintelligence concerns. So these are Russian and Ukrainian women, money going back to uh, Russia. Um, the Russians, Russia, you know, this thing about Russians using, uh, you know, spies, th they can be pretty ruthless about this. And, you know, compromise does indeed happen. So it's possible that this is what this is all about. So, and I get to say something else, even if it isn't, even if this is straightforward criminal activity, that is being involved, which Hunter Biden has got himself tangled with, either because he's paying for services or because he's implicated in some deeper way. There has to be a very real possibility that the Russian authorities, who have a very, very effective, you know, security uh, apparatus in Moscow, police and security apparatus, would get wind of this. And that again open, and then again would suggest that he is compromised. Do you remember? Do shall we just go back a little and remember how much fuss there was about a completely phony story, completely without reality, about Donald Trump going to a hotel in Moscow and uh, doing things there with uh, certain young, certain women there. That was completely not true. It was in the Steele dossier. It's in all the all the reports in all the newspapers. Here we have something that seems to be based on fact. It's based on a money trail. And this is the son of the vice president of the United States and the man who, the man who today wants to become the president of the United States and is the Democratic Party's nominee for president of the United States. Does this not require explanation? Does this not perhaps require investigation? I would have thought so. Yeah, if it is uh, an intelligence trap, then the Russians, the Ukrainians, the Russians, I'm sure the Chinese even have a wind of this. They've got Biden. Yeah. They've got him by the you know what then. Oh, absolutely. If, if this is, yeah, if this is some sort of uh, intelligence operation. No, and even if it isn't, I'm sure they got wind of it and they've oh, got really. Biden by the you know what. Yeah. So, Alexander, real quick before we get into China. Yeah. And wrap up this video. Um, you mentioned in the in the first video that we did on this, Kerry, and how the, the Department of State, the U.S. State Department is also knee deep in this. The mm. U.S. State Department was knee deep in Ukraine. Mm. They deployed Victoria Newland as mm. the, the on the ground henchman, the on the ground hench person in Ukraine to get the entire regime mm. change thing moving and the color revolution moving. Mm. Victoria Tunsing, who is a. Uh, a very well-regarded lawyer in D.C. She's also mm. the wife of Joe De, uh, Joe De Genova. Mm. Was on One America Networks, and she said that Victoria Newland was in constant communication with George Soros, who mm. also has ties to the U.S. State Department, mm. and they were causing all kinds of trouble in Ukraine. But now they're also causing all kinds of trouble via Soros in the U.S. Mm. with the district attorneys and and, and all that stuff, the mail-in ballots, all that stuff that's going on. And isn't it interesting how you have Kerry? Mm. You have Biden, you have Kerry's stepson, mm. you have Devin Archer, you have mm. Hunter Biden, you have Victoria Newland, mm. you have all these people in Ukraine doing all this business mm. and making all this money mm. from the damn country. And we haven't seen until today any solid evidence 
of all the stuff that was taking place and the amounts of money no. that was that was changing hands until no. today where we're seeing numbers like 3.5 million and 4 million and and the purchasing of cars for Kazaki officials and all this stuff that was going on mm. this is Obama should have never stuck his damn nose in Ukraine. No. He has opened up a Pandora's box that is going to that that has the potential to take down the entire Democrat Party if the Republicans really want to pursue this. Well, indeed, and can I just make a point, which is perhaps this is one reason why the Democrats are so nervous about the possibility of a Donald Trump victory why they were so nervous in 2016 and why they're even more nervous now, because it looks as if many of them, or at least their children, are implicated in all kinds of things that were going on in Ukraine. So it gives them a compelling motive for, for the kind of um, really astonishing things that they've been doing in the United States, which we've been talking about so much. And um, I, this is what happens when you become enmeshed in these kind of activities you become compromised you become endangered you've committed things which risk you risk uh, 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 not just discredit discrediting you but if the american people found out about it i mean it would destroy them i mean it would absolutely destroy them which is one reason why you have the democrats say oh this is all russian disinformation even though it's based on u.s government documents oh this is repackaged stuff that we've already heard about when it manifestly is not so that that's why they're trying to downplay it that's why they're trying to suppress discussion of it that's why they're also saying that you know this is all donald trump trying to get uh you know uh punish you know try, trying to get you know get it back on the, joe biden and he's doing it for some nefarious political purpose when in fact it was the Democrats who opened this whole thing up by that crazy impeachment that they launched against him. So uh, when you, that's another thing I should say, when you are very compromised and very frightened, you do stupid things. And it may very well be that that was one of the reasons why that impeachment was launched, because they were worried that Trump was getting too close to some of the things that make them really, really very, very nervous. But we need, to, we need to find out. I mean, what the Republican senators have done, and, you know, I've been very harsh, we've been very harsh on these programs about Republican senators. But this time, they've done actually a good job. I, I, I'm going to say it, and a brave one. Yeah. What, what we need to do is we need to take this as a starting point for a proper investigation. We've talked about this a lot with Russiagate. There's lots went on in Russiagate, and there needs to be a proper investigation about that. And perhaps we've got worries about this now, but perhaps Durham is starting something like this, and maybe we will see more you know, gaining steam after the election is done. But we also need a proper investigation of this because the one may explain the other. The one may explain why Russia Gate and then Ukraine Gate happened, because they're covering up ultimately this. And Hunter Biden is clearly only one person involved. Lots of others were involved also. Yeah, let's get to China. I agree with you on that one. Let's get to China. This is from the Daily Caller. The report says that several transactions involving Biden controlled firms were flagged for, quote, potential criminal financial activity, including wire transfers that Biden sent to his uncle, James Biden. It's a family business, Alexander, and payments that he received from a mysterious Chinese businessman believed to have ties to the People's Liberation Army, the PLA. The report focuses on millions of dollars on in wire payments that Hunter Biden's firms received from Ye Yingmeng, Yingming, the founder of CEFC China Energy Company, and Gong Wendong, a U.S.-based associate of Yi's. According to the Republicans, Yi has extensive connections to the Chinese government. He reportedly served as Deputy Secretary for the China Association for International Friendly Contacts, a front group for the PLA. A report from the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission in 2011 said that CAIFC has dual roles of intelligence collection and conducting people's 
Republics of China propaganda. The Senate report says that on August 4, 2017, a subsidiary of Yi's company called CEFC Infrastructure Investments, US LLC, wired 100000 to a Moscow, the Biden law firm. A month later, on September 8, 2017, Hunter Biden and Gong Wendong applied for a $100,000 line of credit under a shell company they formed called Hudson West 3 LLC, according to the Senate report. Biden, his uncle James, and James's wife, Sarah Biden, accessed the account through credit cards and spent 101291 on what Republicans call extravagant items, including plane tickets, hotels, restaurants, and items at Apple stores. The wires were identified for potential financial criminal activity, the report says. According to the report, CEFC Infrastructure Investments wired $5 million to the bank account for Hudson West, Three on August 8, 2017. Of that, nearly $4.8 million was wired to Biden's law firm over the next year. This is documented. They have dates. They have numbers. They have amounts. This is bad. B-A-D, bad. Very, very bad. What, what did they say during Watergate? Follow the money. Well, here we are. We have a money trail. We have a paper trail. We have an enormous money trail, an enormous paper trail. All of this has been going on practically in plain sight. And as I said, one of the things I find especially shocking about all of this is that, uh, you know, Hunter Biden is coming along with his father to China in um, Air Force Two, got the Secret Service around protecting him. And he's meeting with Chinese officials and Chinese business people. And, you know, China being the kind of place it is, there is never quite the clear dividing line between Chinese business people and Chinese officials. You never know exactly who is what. And you never know exactly who is in intelligence. China has a very elaborate intelligence apparatus, as we know. And, of course, some of these people, they're connected with the Chinese People's Liberation Army, which is very, very heavily involved in the, chi in, in the Chinese business world. It, it has been ever since uh, the 1970s. I mean, it controls directly large sections of the Chinese economy. So we have all of these people meeting up with Hunter Biden. Um, and we also have other members of the family also involved, you know, all, you, all, of, them, all of them going about on you know, credit cards provided in this way. It's not just bad, it's extremely bad. It is very disturbing again. And given that already under the Obama administration, there was a growing appreciation at the highest levels of the United States government that China was the US's great adversary, the country that you know, the United States needed to take more interest in and needed to be more concerned about. And there was this pivot to Asia, which was all about containing China. It seems extraordinary that, you know, the, the Bidens were getting so deeply involved with the Chinese in this way. And we're not talking about small amounts of money. I mean, these amounts of money are enormous in themselves. But one gets the sense here that this is only, again, the surface and that far more was going on that we know about. So once again, investigation is needed. I mean, China and the US weren't exactly enemies at this time. They've become adversaries now. And of course, there is this concept from you know wartime of trading with the enemy. I'm not saying this is what happened. But some people in the United States, given the state of relations between China and the US, might say that it is. So questions, lots of questions, no answers from the Bidens. We need those answers and we need investigators to come and look and tell us exactly what happened. And the money trail is there and the paper trail is there. So if an investigator wants to look, it should not be difficult to get the answers. But I do ask this question. I really do ask this question. And this is something that, you know, people in the United States need to think about. Is this really a president, Joe Biden, in this 
kind of situation with all these allegations swirling out around, with all this information swirling around. Is this really somebody who's suitable to be president of the United States? To me, this person looks profoundly compromised in all kinds of ways. And if he is implicated with China, even if only indirectly through his son, think of that leverage the Chinese must have over him. Yeah, the entire family. I mean, yeah. just so sloppy. Yeah. Going to Apple stores and just so sloppy. But usually yeah. that's, you know, usually it's never the big numbers that get people. It's usually no, the small, sloppy little mistakes that get them in these types of schemes. Anyway. Correct. Correct. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll leave it there. I'm sure we'll do a lot more uh, no, yeah. videos on this story. Lot, lot, Alexander lot more, lots more digging to do. <laughs> yeah. Let's leave it there, guys. Subscribe. Please help us out on PayPal, Patreon, subscribe. Star. This this video will get pummeled and demonetized and all kinds of <laughs> stuff via YouTube. And also go to the Durant shop. That's all the, I have to the, say. We, yeah. the, we are only saying, and I want to say this again, Oh, we're only saying what is in a report provided by the United States Senate. Right, exactly. <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting beyond what the Senate itself is saying. So yeah. you know, we're being we're we're going to be pummeled, as Alex correctly says. But doesn't that in itself tell you something? Just go to the Durad shop, pick up some merch, help us out. Absolutely, here we is a mug with the flag of the U.S. You can see it there, the country that we're talking about, and we got we got hats. Britain, Britain is there. You can see it. You can see Britain, the British flag, another British flag, another another. Another, uh, um, and of course, we got our amazing shirts, our amazing U books, e books, and our amazing uh, um, hoodies. You can find them all in our shop, and you can support us so that we can go on doing programs like this by going there, as well as own all of these great things. All right, we'll sign off. You can find the link to the Durant shop underneath this video. Alexander Merkers, thank you very much. Take care, everybody. <laughs>